Hello everyone. Now, what appears to have happened here is I've bought myself the cheapest V12 in the country. This is a 2007 BMW 760 Li, which reeks of opulence and has more gadgets and toys, well, than a Curry's PC world. So this could go one of two ways. Either I have indeed bought myself the UK's cheapest V12, or in fact, the world's most expensive headache. Driver? So, as I said, it's a 2007 BMW 760 Li. That means it's got the all-important V12, which is ridiculous. It's a Rolls-Royce derived V12 at the time when the Phantom was made. BMW basic, well, I mean, the, the Phantom is a little bit of a BMW parts bin. And this is a six liter V12 that you do find in the Phantom, although that one is bored out to be a six and three quarter liter engine. It's in this stunning Monaco blue, massive, massive 19 inch, quite nice alloys on the side. And as you've seen probably a little bit of already, a cream interior with wood trim everywhere. It really is quite lavish and probably not the sort of thing that you would, I say, expect a 23 year old to be cruising around in. But nonetheless, I'm gonna kick the driver out of the car now, take it for a little spin, and then maybe we'll have a look at some of the toys in the command center at the back of the car. Hear the sound of that plane? Almost like it wasn't there in the first place. So, here we are in my BMW 760 Li. L, by the way, stands for long wheelbase. Um, and while we're talking about that, I won't make you wait at all. How much did I pay for this car? Five grand, which if you ask me, is fantastic value of money because that is basically less than a grand per meter. This car is just shy of 5.2 meters long. It's a barge, but it's a luxury barge at that. And I cannot begin to tell you, we just put it into drive here, how smooth, how quiet, and how comfortable this thing is to drive. It really is like nothing I've experienced before. So although I've got a massive six liter B12 under the bonnet, that's not what it feels like most of the time. And that is exactly how this car was designed. It's got 440 odd brake horsepower and about the same number in pound feet of torque. It's just a surge of power when you do put your foot down, but it doesn't kick you back in the seat. It does it very, very efficiently. And I can imagine again, just designed for the very important executive, which by the way is now me in the back of the car uh, so that they can continue to do whatever it is they're doing without being given neck ache all of a sudden when your foot is put down. But that's just about a quarter throttle and it surges, it surges forward and over a speed bump, not bad. As you might imagine, everything here in the front is electronic. Um, my steering wheel is electronic. You adjust it here with a button like that. It's also heated, which by the way, this heated steering wheel is, it's like touching the inside of an oven. I quite, uh, quite imagine it's probably on par with that of the surface of the sun. Um, it's a very good heated steering wheel. We've also got active, I can't remember what they call it, but active sort of suspension, which completely, completely eradicates body roll in this car, which is ridiculous for a 5.2 meter, two and a half ton barge. Of course, I'm sure there is a limit and I could go maybe 700 miles an hour round this corner up ahead here and it would roll if not flip um, and throw me into the Thames. But it is quite uncanny actually, being in a car this big without any body roll. It's really quite impressive. And as I was saying, everything in here is electronic and it's really, God, he's... 
Now that must be loud because I have double glazing in here and that still sounds like an absolute racket. But yeah, double glazing windows all around, which is very, very nice. We've got suede roof liner, which in this car, um, unbelievably is not sagging anywhere. We will get onto that a little bit more as these videos progress. This car is actually a real gem. And I may regret saying that in a few months when I'm 10,000 pounds south. Anyway, everything is electric in this car, as I've mentioned now. The steering wheel, which is heated, which is lovely. We have cruise control, automatic wipers, automatic lights, obviously an electronic tailgate, which is the boot or the trunk. That's one button to operate that. We have a sunroof, which is electronic, of course. And I love how all the seat controls are here on my left-hand side. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to, and I think if you're a slightly bigger gentleman, or, or lady, you may find yourself knocking uh, these buttons when you don't want to. However, for me, I really like having them here. You've got pretty much six-way adjustability on every part of the seat. You can even adjust just the top part of the backrest, which I'm trying to demonstrate. There we go, I think that's it. It's mad. You can adjust one, two, three, four different parts of the seat, one of which being lumbar. My seats are heated and cooled, of which I've got the heated seats on currently, with a little thing to massage my bottom as well, which is rather, rather pleasant. Um, pleasant is actually just, you know, if, if I had to sum this video up in one word, pleasant. Um, this car is just pleasant. What isn't so pleasant, which is what I'm looking at right now, is my average fuel consumption since I picked this car up. Any guesses? Well, let me tell you something now. It's not got two digits. It is one digit. We're averaging 9.3 miles per gallon, which I did a little bit of a calculation earlier. It's an 88 litre tank. Now, in EU, we are 4.5 gallons per litre. So that's almost exactly 20 gallons of tank and let's try not to crash into this Skoda here. Although if I did, I'm sure I wouldn't feel it, so it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, he's giving me a little flash there to let me know that I made a very good maneuver. So we have a 20 gallon tank, and I worked out even at nine miles per gallon, we would get about 180 miles on a whole tank, which is, is awful, don't get me wrong, but for what I'm doing most, which is driving this car around London, to the shops and back might be, this is this F-Type. Ooh, that sounds very nice. But to the shops and back, maybe four miles or so, if we can get 180 miles on a tank, then that's quite a few trips to the shop, right? So, yes, it's horrific, don't get me wrong, but not that bad. I'm not racking up serious miles, and in fact, you can get over 20 mpg, not that I've proven that, on a long run. But everything you touch in here is just high quality got the wooden dash which is two-tone everything up here is leather all of this is suede or alcantara the wheel itself is lovely even though it probably could do with a little bit of attention even here down here by my door handle leather leather door pockets with carpet inside it really is just exquisite and um it's just a silly car, isn't it? I really do not need to be driving around in this. It screams excess. Um, and I do kind of like that about that. The iDrive system, well, it's, you know, it is the one thing that I won't try and say to you is, is great because it isn't, but you know, it's, it's not as bad as everyone makes out. I've just sold my M240i, as you guys know, which had the latest pro navigation system. Yeah, it was the latest iDrive. And coming out of that, yes, it took me about a day or so with this car to get my head around the way it works. Um, but actually, the amount of functionalities on it aren't nearly as daunting as I thought they might be. And once you do get around the basics of how to control it, it's actually fairly intuitive. There's just not really anything of much use on there, apart from maybe the TV. And so I just press the button down on the menu. If you go onto the menu here, and press the center of the iDrive button down, the screen, screen just goes black and I actually just have it that way most of the time. There's obviously all of these horror stories about how you can't change the heating settings or anything without going into the iDrive. Well, with this car, that's not the case because you've still got the analog 
dials here and again all just very nice and quite high quality feeling to use we've got drawers everywhere in this car again all wood all working all feel really really expensive and of course a little quirky phone that comes out there um, which you can use to dial while you're driving so yes this is an exquisite car um, and something that's very very nice to drive I mean I can't begin to tell you how comfortable it is just sitting here to the point where actually I'm about to pull over now and get out and swap seats and I don't really want to because this is actually more comfortable than my house but yes it is all well and good from the driver's seat but where you really want to be is in the command or the business center which is the back of this car being the long wheelbase so yes we'll jump into the back because like I said it's uh, well it's it's better equipped than an Airbus A380 and just the leather and stuff in here I think there's probably enough leather in this car to give a vegan a panic attack so let's jump in the back and have a little bit of fun with the toys Okay, so, oh, soft closed doors, very nice. Here we are in the command center of my BMW 760Li, still seems very, very bizarre saying that. And I think that's probably because it is quite bizarre, um, but I absolutely love it. This thing is just hilarious. It, I don't really know how else to describe it, but let me just take you through the toys in here because it's uh it's enough to get an eight-year-old i mean just i can imagine if i was a child and my dad had this car i i wouldn't have known what to do with myself i probably would have lived in here it really is quite something but i've already noticed that i'm not quite happy with how close i'm sitting to the front passenger seat so what i do here if i press this button i can then push that passenger seat out of my way so it gives me a little bit more leg room and when I say a little bit more it's stupid um, I can literally basically extend my legs entirely in fact if I wanted to I could just put my feet up there and what's great is that this car isn't worth a ton of money so you can just sort of really enjoy it um, and by that I mean I can put my dirty shoes up on this very nice leather center console um, so I can control the front, oh that's my seat, I can control the front passenger seat which is a really quirky and quite useful feature and I can imagine I can have a lot of fun winding some people up with that. Um, I then of course have my window controls, a very nice ashtray for the smokers amongst us here and probably my favourite thing actually in the back, or is it my favourite thing, I don't know, we'll, we'll work that out, um, is the window blinds of which I have one here and then also a separate one for the rear part of the window and then behind me obviously the main rear windscreen i can also flick this button across here and pop up the other side's window blinds because why on earth would i want to reach over and do that but for the sake of good lighting let's open these back up again and i don't think that's going to get boring is it and that one there we go i mean that is just crazy and all still working Above me here then, got a really nice grab handle. This is, again, detailed with, with wood. Just feels so sturdy. And this one is specced with individual air conditioning units. So each side um, of the, the rear has its own air conditioning unit uh, with individual controls, which is crazy. Of course, I can see with the seat being so far extended, we've got underfloor um, ventilation as well also another fan here which you can control individually so fan here fans up here fans down here and just god knows where else really it's, it's quite something um again looking eyes front more ventilation and this very old first class seat style uh tv which i think the car's running so if i want to um i can quite literally go ahead and pop on uh whatever it is i want to watch so let's go tv here so I can then watch the news uh, on the way to my very important business meeting. And you might be able to notice that I can barely hear that, but here on the front of this console, I can adjust that volume. Is that the answer to, to stop charging? Which is crazy. I can also then flick the channel uh, by pressing one of these buttons. 
and it will do that as well. There is, by the way, a volume control for each side. So the passenger can adjust the volume using this side, and I can adjust the volume using this side. They've even got separate controls for that. It's just, well, it's just mental. Anyway, I'm gonna close that. So that tucks away like that. Then we've got the center console and all the seat controls, very much similar to the front of the car. I've got ventilated and heated seats, which I'm gonna put on actually. Um, and also their memory as well. So you can set memory functions in this car. So let's do memory one. That's pretty much set up for recline. And in terms of that, they don't recline as far as you might expect. But having said that, I mean, you could get really, really comfortable in here. I can't imagine much else I've been in that would be better suited for a long distance drive. Um, yeah, I mean this, it really, it's just amazing and I can imagine then if I close the blinds here um, it's just so so relaxing it's such a lovely place to be and my ashtray won't close there we go um, so it's stunning and of course I have an iDrive wheel here so I can control everything on the screen in fact let's just pull that back up so even from my recline position here yes we've got the TV but I can also uh, set the navigation for the driver. So I've just received a call from my friend Jeeves who needs me in central London for a meeting at two. Well, I can set a destination here for exactly where we need to go or in fact, get the driver to do it for me and therefore watch our progress as we go from the back. Even though I can see the iDrive screen at the front, but that's not the point, is it? This is all about luxury and excess. So I will say actually, this as well <coughs> is a storage compartment, which again, carpeted inside looks like it's barely been touched I mean this piece of plastic for example just looks brand spanking new um, and this can go up there and you have a third seat there is a third seat belt there is a third seat belt I think there's a third seat belt there is there's a third seat belt so you can actually have a third person in here although whoever ends up sitting in the middle is definitely well the probably the middle child or the least favorite in said family uh, but also another fun thing here and I need to kit this out is a fridge which you can control uh, with this button here on or off and also in the iDrive system you can control the fridge uh, which of course is great for storing any of your most delicate and treasured items uh, for which um, you need to be refrigerated so yeah um, fridge fantastic it's got everything this guy's the 760 Li so it has everything as per standard another nice little thing that's hidden away is the cup holders which there's two in the back here and they come out like that very very good actually holds your cup in for once which is a nice change and you can press this button here which a bit like on an aircraft if you've ever flown in I don't know business class that is a little bit annoying anyway if you've ever been in sort of one of those bigger seats on a plane there's normally a button which you have to press which sort of returns you to the takeoff position they call it uh, or landing where you sort of got to you got to be sat in a certain way for takeoff or landing for safety reasons presumably but there's a button that I've just pressed there which sort of puts you in a sort of comfortable I guess lounge upright position then of course I can just hit my memory number one and uh, decide after that horrific noise that I'm just gonna have a little nap it's I love the seats. Don't really know what else to say, guys, apart from the fact that this is my 760 Li. I have a few things planned with it, which I won't reveal, uh, but at the moment, as it stands, everything is in perfect working order. I've had a couple of warning lights here and there, but nothing major. It is losing a bit of coolant, uh, but that's something I'm completely used, used to with my, with my Z4, my other BMW at the moment. Um, but just like, I mean, like I say, this isn't sagging at all, this headline. The seats feel like they've never been sat in. All the electronics are working. These heated seats are absolutely roasting me to the sun, so I'm gonna switch them off. It's just uh, wonderful. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm really intrigued to hear what you guys think, actually. This is a car that I've always sort of wanted, and I've just gone bloody well done it, haven't I? So thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you very, very soon in the next video.